357 SIG ammo test, Hornady 124 grain XTP. Test gun is the Glock 32, 4 inch barrel, SimTest Media calibrated to ballistic gel specs, plus four layers of denim. For 357 SIG, Hornady also offers this in 147 grains, which runs about 100 feet per second slower than this. The 124, by the way, is advertised at 1,350 feet per second. However, in the Glock 32, four inch barrel, which is an excellent size for concealed carry. My five shot average is at 1284. The low was 1263. The high was 1305. So quite a bit below the advertised velocity. And if you know anything about the 357 SIG, it was designed to replicate the ballistics of a 357 Magnum in a short barrel. And that's around 1450 feet per second. So hey, what's going on here? We're really pushing this further, further down to what I think is closer to a 9mm plus P or plus P plus, and that's actually what it feels like what I'm shooting. I have a question for you folks, because I really could not find a definitive answer to this. In the 9mm XTP, Hornady also uses a 124 grain bullet. Is it the same one that we're using here? Because their 9mm load is coming in around 1100 and change. I mean, literally uh, 1110, 1120, so it's quite a bit slower than the 357 SIG offering, but is it the same bullet? Because uh, that could have an impact on this performance, this zipping along at a much higher velocity. Hornady advertises that this has a heavy jacket, and that's going to uh, supposedly make this more durable at these higher velocities. They also advertise that we should anticipate 1.5 times expansion compared to the original diameter of the XTP bullet, and they say that about all the calibers that this is manufactured for, and also it is not a bonded bullet. So we're going to toss this at a block of SimTest Media calibrated to ballistic gel specs, shooting from a distance of 10 feet. Point of impact is a little bit to the left of where I wanted that to be, but it is in the block, no pass through, and you had a pretty good shock wave on the impact. Running out of daylight, so I'll try to get through this and may have to move indoors for the remainder of this video. You can see the point of entry here, and very clearly where the expansion begins, about three quarters of an inch after the entry. Pretty impressive there. Then you see all the denim being blown in. And the discoloration in this media, as I've noticed after a couple of dozen of these tests, is that that's where you had some really high stress. It didn't open up all the way, but that's where you had some stress. So we're moving along here, and where are we right now? About the four and a half, five inch mark. Starts to settle down, moving forward. This is part of the track here, and actually I was cutting through part of this to get to the track. So not all of that is represented, but you can see where we're tearing through there a little bit. And there we have it. The front edge is at 14 and a half inches. Get a little bit of a close-up. Here we go. Let me get that out for you and see if we have any denim plug in the cavity and some close-ups. We're not going to have any denim in the cavity because there isn't one. It is gone. It's flattened out. So next we're going to have the weight and average diameter and then the close-ups. After washing out some media that was trapped in between the expanded petals, retained weight is 120.6 grains. I've already found some lead fragments in the damage path, and so far, those are coming in at just over one grain. There's one of your expanded diameter marks. That is also your average, 0.568. The 124 grain XTP and 357 SIG is a cartridge I'm finding very common in my area. That's a plus. Hopefully yours as well. Manageable recoil. Expansion was greater than what was advertised. And textbook expansion at that. Adequate penetration. This could be a good load for you. Thanks for watching.